editing Lindsay here. I just wanted to pop in and say, if you saw my last video, you know that I decided to split up part six and seven of the Unhaul series. It was originally supposed to just be one part, but I decided that the video was going to be too long, so I decided to split it up into two different parts. So this is going to be part seven. This is the bookshelf that is out in my living room. It's going to pick up kind of weird because I was essentially planning on doing it all as one video. Sorry, there's not really an introduction to this video because I filmed it like a month ago, <laughs> but I just wanted to kind of clarify if you didn't see my last video or if you didn't watch all the way till the end that I decided to split up part six into part six and part seven. So that is what this is. Part seven of the unhaul. The last part of the unhaul series. Please enjoy. All right, we've moved into the living room to do the final bookshelf for this unhaul project. I am not loving this lighting. Uh, I was gonna use natural light, but it's raining today. So I brought the ring light in here. It's not ideal, but we're working with it. This shelf looks big. There are five shelves, but there are only books on four of them and none of the shelves are completely full because of reasons. So this one probably won't take that long. And I honestly don't really know what's gonna happen with these books. I'm not really sure how many of these I'm gonna be keeping or getting rid of or putting on the top of the TBR or whatever. I have been keeping all of my classics and some of my favorite series out here on these shelves. And I'm actually getting rid of this bookshelf completely. So uh, these are all, all the books that stay are gonna be moving onto the big shelves in the other room. So this is going to be an adventure. Like sometimes I have a pretty good idea of like which books I'm going to be getting rid of, which books I'm going to be keeping, but I literally don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't even remember all the books that are on the shelf because I never go for them because they're out here, first of all. And second of all, most of them are classics or books that I have already read. So who knows? All right, let's get started. I should also mention some of these books are Cole's. So if they're Cole's books, I'm keeping them because obviously they're his. Like I'm not, I can't get rid of his books. <laughs> I have a little stack of mass market paperback classics. So the first one is I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. This is Cole's book, so we're keeping it. And that book's not even on my TBR. I've read it, I read it in high school and um, I thought it was, you know, fine, but he hasn't ever read it. So that's why we have it and obviously keeping it. Next up, uh, Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. This was one of my favorite books that I had to read my senior year of high school and I have kept it all this time because I read this edition. I do like this book but I think I'm actually going to unhaul this because I would like to purchase like a nice copy to keep on my shelves and for some reason I've just always held on to this. It hasn't, I mean I this was before I even like made notes in margins of my books. So it's not like I have any like special tie to this. It's just the edition I read when I initially read it. So I'm unhauling this. Next is Blue Like Jazz by Donald Miller, which is Cole's book actually, but I have also read this one and I didn't really care for it personally, but he hasn't read it, so we're keeping it. And then I have Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. This is one of my favorite books. It's been one of my favorite books since I read it. Like years and years ago, I read this and I loved it. And I've actually read it a couple of times since then. And I love it just as much every time I read it. This is another one that I would like to purchase in like a nicer copy because uh, I do love it so much, but I mean, it's fine. I'm keeping it for now. And then eventually when I do replace it with like a nicer, like not mass market paperback copy, I'll unhaul this one. But for now, I'm keeping it. And then I have two J.D. Salinger books. I have Franny and Zoe, which is actually just two short stories together. And then I also have The Catcher in the Rye. Obviously, everybody knows The Catcher in the Rye. I have never read this, to be honest. I never had to read it in school. It was not a book that we read in my school. I also didn't have to read it in college for any reason. I bought it because one, it was like a couple of dollars at the local new and used bookstore that used to be in the town I live in. I, I just haven't read it. I've never, I've never felt the urge to read it. So this is one I'm kind of on the fence about keeping or getting rid of just because I haven't ever read it and I don't know if I will ever feel the need or desire. I have this really weird relationship with classics now where yeah they are like literary canon or whatever but like who put together the literary canon? A bunch of old dead white guys. There's like not a lot of diversity in the canon. There's you know it's just a lot of the same and there are so many books that have come out since books like this were published. There's so many books that are still coming out that are just so valuable and have the exact same message or a better message that are diverse, that are, you know, more inclusive, that really represent where I think like publishing and like the readership is going. We go all our lives thinking, you know, these are the books that we need to read because they're part of the literary canon. But in reality, like, 
just because some old dead white guy said it should be in the literature, you know, said that it's an important book that we should all read it, doesn't mean that we all need to read it. There are, you know, a vast number of books in existence that are better than a lot of classics. So yeah, this is a classic and I'm sure it's a classic for a reason, but does that mean that I need to read it? Does that mean that I have to read it? I don't think I'm gonna like it, to be honest. Everything I've ever seen or heard or read about this book does not lead me to believe that I'm actually going to enjoy it. So do I need to keep it? I don't think I do. So I'm actually, I'm unhauling both of these. I have read Franny and Zoe, it was fine. I think I'm just gonna, yeah, I just think I'm gonna unhaul both of these because I don't, I don't feel the need. And I feel like that's gonna be the sentiment a lot for these books just because I've been thinking about those things a lot lately. All right, next up we got Howl and Other Poems by Ellen Ginsberg. I had to read this for a class in college. I took a, uh, an American poetry class. It was one of my favorite classes that I took in college and I really, really loved this. So I'm gonna keep it. Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery, Lucy Maud Montgomery. Again, one of my favorite books. Uh, this was my favorite book, I think 2017 maybe. I have always, always loved the BBC miniseries uh, adaptation of Anne of Green Gables, or is it BBC? The can it's can whatever the Canadian miniseries. Y'all all know what I'm talking about. I've always loved that. I finally read the book a few years ago and just loved it so much. And so obviously I am keeping this. Also, this edition is just the cutest. You can't really tell because the ring light is so stupidly bright, but uh, it's really nice. And I also have the that same edition of The Secret Garden by Francis, Francis Hodgson Burnett, which I read in middle school and I really enjoyed it. I also really love the movie adaptation. And so I'm keeping this as well. I bought this just because I love the cover, but I should reread it at some point because I think I would like it even more now as an adult. Also, did not realize, because I've literally never opened this book, even though I bought it years ago, uh, there are illustrations. That's cool. Okay, On the Road by Jack Kerouac. I've tried to read this a bunch of times, and this is kind of in the same vein of The Catcher in the Rye. This is actually kind of the book that sparked my whole, like, reevaluating the purpose of classics. Also, my cat is scratching on his cat tree literally right next to me, so I'm very sorry if that is distracting. I think it was Kayla, Books and Lala, who did a video a few months ago that was all about, re I think it was the video where she read books because she's an Aries, maybe, and I think she read this book in that video, and she did this whole discussion about, like, talking about, you know, the value of classics now, and, like, whether or not they're as important as we have always made them out to be, just because this story has probably been told a hundred times since it came out in a better non, you know, racist, sexist, misogynistic way. That's kind of when I started thinking about like the actual value of classics. And this is one of those that I bought because I felt like I should read it just because I studied English in college. Obviously I've, I've always had a huge love of literature and I've never read it and I've never actually been able to read it. Like I've tried to read it a few times and I've never been able to get through it. So I think I'm gonna unhaul it. Like I just don't, I just don't think that any time in my life I'm going to need to read this, like I'm gonna feel the desire to read this and actually get something out of it. The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. This is also a little collection of short stories and I think it's like horror reimaginings of some classic fairy tales, which is what interested me in it. I'm keeping it, I haven't read it yet, but I'm going to keep it just because I'm still interested in it. And it's really not that long. So I think once I actually do feel like reading it, then it won't take me long to get into it. Next, I've got The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera, another book that I think I bought because somebody told me I needed to read it as a person who loves books and who loves literature. And I don't really know much about it, to be honest. I don't know what it's about. I don't know, you know, the value of it. It's not super long. Let me know your opinions on this one down in the comments. I don't love this edition, but it's not super long. See, it's like so hit or miss, honestly. Like, I don't give a shit about reading On the Road or The Catcher in the Rye, but do I still wanna read The Unbearable Lightness of Being? I don't know. Next is And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, which I read last year and I liked it fine. I read it right around Christmas time. And something that I talked about in the video, I think I was vlogging maybe when I read it. Something I talked about was just how like, yeah, there is a lot of value in Agatha Christie because she's the queen of mystery. You know, she she basically is the foundation of a lot of the mystery books that are published now. And pretty much any like mystery thriller that comes out, there's probably some kind of influence from an Agatha Christie novel. But because I've read so many like modern uh, thrillers, I didn't find this all that shocking. I actually basically predicted the killer 
from the very first moment that character was introduced. It's not the book's fault. Obviously, like I waited so long to read it. And obviously, like there are so many people that love Agatha Christie that love and then there were none like it's a very popular very well-loved book I just personally found it pretty underwhelming I would definitely recommend it if you like mystery thrillers and you've never picked up an Agatha Christie book then for sure check her out because she's obviously like the queen of mystery for a reason but I personally am going to be unhauling this the next book is my Antonia by Willa Cather I literally know nothing about this book I think it's set in Nebraska it's all about a family living in the Midwest during a period of time. I'm keeping this just because I have always heard that it's really good. I actually also have the audiobook of this one from Audible. So if I, you know, ever decide that I want to read a classic, which every once in a while the mood does strike, let's be real, I probably listen to the audiobook, but I'm going to keep the book on my shelf for now because I really love this cover, first of all. And second of all, I, I think I'll actually like this once I get around to reading it. So I'm going to hang on to it. Brave New World by Aldous Huxley is a classic obviously, that I have read. I liked this. I read it a few years ago and I thought it was really good. I think there's actually an adaptation coming out soon or maybe just recently came out. Maybe it's a TV show adaptation. I don't know. I'm keeping this because I do think I want to reread it because I think I do want to watch the adaptation when it comes out or at some point if it has already come out. So I'm holding on to this one, hoping to reread it but I did like this book. A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith, another book that I am gonna keep. I'm still super interested in this and I, I just feel like once I read it, I'm gonna like it. It's about a girl who loves books and I like girls who love books. Also, it's set in New York, which I like books set in New York, so I am going to keep it. I realize I'm not putting any of these like at the top of the TBR like I have done for like every other previous video, but that's just because classics are the, a weird thing that I really just have to like, the mood has to strike so if the mood doesn't strike i don't know I, I can't force myself to read a classic you know i have to i have to get what i can get out of it when the mood strikes you know next is the blind assassin by margaret atwood i read the first couple chapters of this for a try a chapter tag actually and i was super interested in it at the time i need to like actually read it but I'm going to keep it because I do actually want to read it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put this one at the top of the TBR and I'm going to say that if I don't read this in the next year, then I'm going to unhaul it because I have owned it since like 2014, but I want to keep it. So I'm going to. Next is Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, which is a book that I have read. I read it in college and I liked it fine. I probably, I don't know. Virginia Woolf is one of those people for me that is... Well, I want to say hit or miss, but it's not really hit or miss just because I have only read this one book by her, but I found parts of this book to be very hit or miss. So like parts of it were good, parts of it were okay, parts of it were not great. I think I'm actually going to unhaul this. I like it fine and I like this edition. It's the vintage classics edition, which you can't really find in the United States. I found it at a thrift store and I really like the cover. Actually, you know what? I'm going to hang on to it just because I might want to reread it someday. Maybe get more out of it when I'm not having to like study it, you know? And next is Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Berendt. Berendt? I actually should know how to say that, but I don't. This is Cole's book, so I'm going to be keeping it. I think it's nonfiction. I think it's about something happening in Georgia. I don't know, it's Coles, so I'm keeping it, obviously. Next is Revolutionary Road by R Richard Yates, which I read a few years ago and I enjoyed. This is one of those that I feel like did kind of the rounds on booktube when I first started booktube. And so it was kind of when I was reading classics more just because I was reading a bunch in college. So I read this and I liked it. Uh, I've never watched the movie, although I think I would probably enjoy the movie as well, but I don't foresee myself ever wanting to reread this. I'm gonna be decisive and I'm gonna go with my first instinct, which was to unhaul this, but I did like it and I would recommend it. The Old Man in the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. This is Cole's book, so I'm gonna let him keep it. Obviously I have read this. I didn't particularly care for it, but it's Cole's. So we're keeping it. White Sargasso Sea by Jean Reese is a book that was recommended to me in a creative writing class that I took in college. I am still super interested in reading it. I've always been meaning to reread re Jane Eyre and then read this and like compare them. So I feel like a lot of people do it that way. So maybe someday I'll actually do that but I'm gonna be keeping this. Night by Ellie Wiesel is a book that I have read. I read it in high school and I loved it. One of my favorite books that I had to read in high school and I bought myself a copy of it because obviously it's just really great. It's a nonfiction book. It's the author's account of being in a concentration camp during World War II. It's one of the most heartbreaking books that I've ever read. I, I can only think of maybe five books that have made me cry harder than this book made me cry. So there's my recommendation. If you haven't read this book, I really would recommend it. 
and it's great and I'm obviously keeping it. Birthday Letters by Ted Hughes is a collection of poems by Ted Hughes all about Sylvia Plath. I went through this period in high school slash early college where I was really really into Sylvia Plath and I also got kind of into like not in into I wanted to know everything about her relationship with Ted Hughes and a lot of people recommended that I read Birthday Letters which is a collection that he basically wrote to her or about her it might he might have written it after she died basically it's like a love letter to sylvia plath from ted hughes and i have always been fascinated by it i've read bits and pieces of this throughout the years i've never read it all the way through because i'm not like the biggest fan of poetry and i have to be in a very particular mood but i'm going to be keeping it this took me so long to track down uh because it's i don't know if it's just not in print anymore or if it's just like not widely you know available but i finally found it at a thrift store after years and years of searching for it so i am not going to be unhauling this and i am actually going to read it at some point hopefully soon but who knows and i've also got i capture the castle by Dodie smith which i know is a book that is so beloved on booktube by people who tend to go for more classics more often and for that reason i'm going to be keeping it for the, the last couple books for this shelf i've got emma by jane austen this is a book oh there's a bookmark in here i know i did try to read this or i started it a couple of times i want to read this so bad <laughs> i'm keeping this i'm gonna read it i love jane austen and i have seen a lot of adaptations of emma every once in a while i just get this you know whim like i'm gonna read emma and then i haven't read it yet but i really am gonna read emma soon so keeping this a portrait of the artist as a young man by james joyce my cat is making so much noise this is another one like on the road that i could go either way with well no actually that's not true because i am certainly going one way with on the road and that is straight to the unhaul pile this one i could go more either way with but i think i'm gonna unhaul it i actually also have access to the uh ebook or audiobook or something i mean it's like public domain because it's a classic so it's out there somewhere i just don't know if i'm ever actually going to be interested in reading these classics so i think i'm going to unhaul this one and i think i'm going to do the same for love in the time of cholera because i don't know i just yeah no gut instinct unhaul i just don't see myself wanting to read these books i think i've actually also read the first chapter of this for a try a chapter at some point am i ever actually gonna find the time to read these there's so many other books that i'm so much more interested in gone with the wind by margaret mitchell i think i want to read this yeah i think i want to read this i'm gonna keep it uh because i'm gonna read it at some point this has been on my tbr since before i started book two almost eight years at this point yeah you know what top of the tbr this one's going to the top of the tbr because i gotta read it if i don't read it any here it's going but i maybe will weathering heights by emily bronte i have read this i really enjoyed it one of my favorite classics gonna keep it next up we've got two barnes and noble classics Everything's fine. I'm still really interested in reading Middlemarch. I'm not so much interested in reading the Brothers Karamazov. So I actually think I'm gonna unhaul this one and I'm gonna keep this one. War and Peace. I actually tried to read this once and I got like 100 pages in and was very proud of that progress. Sometime at some point I am going to read this. So I'm going to keep it. Next up, Jane Eyre one of my favorite classics. I don't love this edition and I would like to get like a nice edition at some point, but for now I'm going to keep this one. All right. And the last one on this shelf is The Set of Paradise by F. Scott Fitzgerald. As far as like my booktube career, this is the oldest book on my TBR at this point. I'm pretty sure this was in my very first book haul that I ever did on booktube. I bought it because I felt like I had to read it. Also at some point my cat chewed up the little bookmark inside <laughs> yeah like i said at some point i bought this because i thought i should read it i thought i needed to read it again like you know the literary canon thing but to be honest i really don't like the great gatsby it's one of my least favorite books <laughs> that i've ever read i've owned this book since 2013 and i have never wanted to pick it up not one time so i'm gonna unhaul this all right now we're moving on to the third shelf which you can't really uh, see as much this is like my favorite series <laughs> We're getting into that territory of my favorite series. So yeah, let's let's do it. First up, we've got The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. This is one of my favorite series of all time. Like, I truly love The Raven, Cy Raven Cycle. The second book is my favorite in the series. Obviously, I'm keeping this because I, I can't get rid of it. It's like my favorite. So I'm keeping it, uh, obviously. The other books on the shelf are the Harry Potter books. And we, we do not support J.K. Rowling in this house. She is garbage. 
and um, not interested in reading anything by her ever again. That being said, <laughs> and I feel like a lot of people probably um, have met this dilemma at some point in the last, you know, year or so after, you know, well, especially in the last few months because of all the shit that has been going down that she's been saying. I'm not ready to unhaul the Harry Potter books. I'm not going to hold them up because not, we're just not doing that. I'm never going to talk about the books on my channel probably ever again. Um, but I'm not, I'm not ready to get rid of them. I mean, it is what it is. I should get rid of them, right? Like I should, I should just get rid of them if I don't want to support her, which I don't. Uh, I should just, you know, get rid of everything related to her that I own, but I'm not ready. So I'm keeping the Harry Potter books for now, but I am going to get rid of the screenplay for the Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. I've got <laughs> Daughter of Smoke and Bone and Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor. These are the first two books in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. Is that what it's called? I think that's what it's called. I have read this book. I never read this one. I never bought the third one. I have contemplated unhauling these books so many times. <laughs> like, it's been in the unhaul pile and then I took it back out because I changed my mind. I think the last time it was in the unhaul pile was right around the time that I read Strange the Dreamer and I really loved that book. So then I took it out and thinking, I'm gonna read this and I'm gonna love it. And I have never done that. I don't know, I just don't have a lot of interest in this series anymore. And so I think I'm actually gonna just, I think I'm gonna unhaul them. The same is true for Truth Witch and Wind Witch by Susan Dennard. I have read Truth Witch and I thought it was fine. I actually think I have a video review of it on my channel perhaps. I've never read Wind Witch and it came out years and years ago. I, I pre-ordered this book and got it when it came out. And I believe like two other books in the series have out since this one and I have never felt compelled to pick it up. I, I think when it first came out I was planning on rereading this one and then reading this one and I never got around to doing that and now I don't care. So I think I'm unhauling these. I know that there's a lot of love for the series and I'm sure it's good but I only felt okay about this book like I didn't love it and it's been years and I've never wanted to continue on. The next ones are the original hardback editions of the Grisha trilogy by Lee Bardugo. We've already talked about this trilogy in previous installments of this video series. I love this series and also apparently you can't find these editions of these books anywhere. These were the original ones I read. I bought the paperbacks because I loved those covers and also I just love the series so I wanted to support the author. This is the OG so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it. Actually, let's just go ahead and do the rest of the Leo Ardugo books while we're at it. I've got Six of Crows, Crooked Kingdom, King of Scars, and The Language of Thorns, all by Leo Ardugo. All of these books are set in the Grisha world. All of these books are some of my favorites. I mean, this, this fantasy world is one of my favorite fantasy worlds I've ever read. So obviously all of these books are staying. And lastly, for this bookshelf out here in my living room, we've got the A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Mass. Another one of my controversial faves. I mean, it is what it is. The people that like the series like it, not because it's well written, not because it's, you know, the best thing that they've ever read, but because it's just like crack, you know? It's entertaining in a way that it is entertaining. And um, I, I, I like these books. I do enjoy every now and then rereading these books just for fun. So I'm keeping these. Okay, that's it. Back to other me where I'm gonna talk about like book totals for this video because that's what's happening. If you wanna know like number wise what was in the living room, uh, total 62 books. Uh, I decided to unhaul, I'm doing math right now in my head. 15 of them. Six of them I read, nine of them I had not read. And then only two of them ended up at the top of my TBR, The Blind Assassin and Gone with the Wind. So that's gonna be it. Stay tuned in a couple days for part seven where I kind of wrap things up. I'm excited to just talk through a bunch of like my feelings about the series as a whole and um, if you stuck with it this long thank you so much I really appreciate you obviously let me know your thoughts opinions feelings about any of the books that I showed in this video and uh, just just let me know if you agree or disagree or you think there's books that I definitely need to get rid of because I'll no longer enjoy I'd really love to know all the things down in the comments thanks so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you again very soon bye